Glad to have you here, folks. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Tuesday, July 16th. Now, no surprise is what we're going to do here. We're going to focus in on some hot penny stocks with an S. I trade penny stocks every day from bell to bell. These are stocks under five bucks that are on every single market. There is no lack of penny stocks, but hot penny stocks take a little bit of work and effort to find. I look for my hot penny stocks looking at charts. I find it easier and quicker to look at charts and I can see heat in a chart a lot easier than I can see heat in a headline. When I find a chart that has heat, then I'll go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings of the company. See if I can find a hot piece of information. If you can find some hot news to match a hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I want to trade. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you. And I got two of them to share with you today. Both of these companies are biotech, pharmaceutical companies. Not my favorite to cover by any means. Half of what I read, I don't understand. The other half, I can't pronounce and I look stupid. So I'm not crazy about talking about these companies, but I didn't pick them. The charts did. And I don't argue with the charts. If the chart says I look like I'm ready to run, that's something I want to get in on. So I just try to bear up to all the aggravations and I'm going to bear up to it and share these with you. Now, both of these stocks, as I said, I found looking at the charts, but their charts are completely different. One is an atypical breakout chart. My favorite pattern. That's the name I gave it because it is my favorite pattern. That is when your 200 day SMA is falling. Your price is underneath it falling. The 200 starts to level out and go flat, giving the price a chance to turn up and cut through that 200. And that's when you have your breakout, your atypical breakouts. I love those patterns. The other one, not so much a breakout pattern. She had some bad news, which caused her to drop real hard. And she's had some time and she's turning around. Looks like we've got a strong recovery, possibly. So the first stock we're going to take a look at is Ovid, ticker O-V-I-D. This is Ovid Therapeutics Inc. This is the company that had the big drop and we're looking at for a recovery. She finished today at a dollar four and she was up almost 11%. Now this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. I prefer penny stocks on the major exchange over the OTC, to be honest. There's just a lot of benefits, folks. First off, they're free to trade. It's great that I don't have to pay to sell or buy my shares, but it gives me flexibility. I can now scale in multiple purchase. I can scale out multiple sales and I don't have to repeatedly pay to get in and get out. Plus the major exchange has a heck of a lot more money and a heck of a lot more volume. That's where you want your stocks to be. Third, you can trade these pre-market aftermarket folks. And I got to be honest, some of the biggest bounces I've ever seen happen in those periods of time, not just for the day, but sometimes the biggest bounces I've ever seen. I'm talking about bounces, not just climbs. And you can never take advantage of those with the OTC. And one of the biggest benefits is safety. The companies up on the major exchange have a ton of rules that they have to abide by. And there's a lot of people monitoring them. We have a decentralized system down on the OTC, not a lot of oversight. They're getting away with far too much and we're the ones paying for it. So personally, I prefer trading the penny stocks on the major exchange. So what is Ovid Therapeutics? Well, I told you they are a biopharmaceutical company, but more to the point, Ovid Therapeutics is a New York based biopharmaceutical company that is dedicated to improving the lives of people affected with epilepsies and brain conditions with seizure symptoms. The company is advancing a pipeline of novel targeted small molecule candidates. They've got a couple studies going on right now, Soltistat and the Skyline study. And then they mentioned three other drugs here, OV888, OV329, and OV350. And all three of these are working with seizures and epilepsy. Now, this is a research and development company. They have a little bit of money coming in. I'm not quite sure where it's coming from because I haven't seen any drugs that have been approved. Though I didn't do a deep dive, maybe they have something. But they don't pay anything for their revenue. So it looks like consultancy fees or something. But my point is, is that the stock normally moves on news because they don't have any real fundamentals. Bad news comes in on one of the phase trials. She drops. 
good news comes in from a phase trial, she rises. Now these phase trials take a long time to get a drug on the market. It takes about five years, eight years to get it through all of the phase trials. And that's not counting the research. Research and development companies, since they don't have any money coming in, have to constantly be going to the investors, whether it be us or the big investors, to get money coming in so that they can keep doing their work, their research, looking for that magic bullet. When they find a magic bullet, they got to put it into studies. That costs a lot of money and it takes many years. Phase one, that takes about a year. That checks for them to be safe. Can you take it and not die, not get chronic hiccups or diarrhea? You get through that, you move into phase two. That's efficacy. This can take like three years. This is where you prove how well your drug works for what you say it works on. Now, let's say you have a pain relief drug that works on a hundred different pains. Well, they call every different pain an indicator. Well, when you're putting it into a phase trial, the more indicators you give them, the more they have to prove. They have to prove it works for this and that and that and that. But if you give them one indicator, let them prove it works for that, get this through the trials and on the market. Then you come back and say, this also works for A, B, C, and D. Now you can start having it being studied for those other ones while you're making money on it. Then once you get through efficacy, you then hit phase three. Phase three can take up to five years, depending how many other drugs out there do what you do. They are now pitting your drug, the FDA, up against all of the other drugs that do what you do. And they're looking for top dog. Top dog gets put on the market. If you don't prove yourself to be better than what's already on the market, you missed the mark. Well, that's what happened, folks. On June 17th, Ovid reported their phase three top line study results. Top line meaning the end. You're finally finished. I know it sounds like they're great results. Well, they tell us here the Skyline study in the Dravet syndrome narrowly missed its primary endpoint of reduction in convulsive seizure frequency. However, it did show clinically meaningful and significant key secondary efficacy endpoints. That's like saying, but he did come in second place. There was some important things he did there. Some of us are going to remember it missed it, folks. All the money they put into research to find the magic drug. Then all the time and all the money getting through the phase one, phase two, phase three, which takes at least five years. And here we are. They missed it. Dead horse. It just fell over. Everybody was upset. This stock fell this day from $3.20 down to like 70 cents. And it's taken some time and she's starting to come up again. So this was a hard blow for them. And the company knows it because this was going to be pulling in revenues. Now they've had to make some adjustments. They tell us Ovid will prioritize and pursue its programs with financial discipline and expects its cash runaway to last until the first half of 2026. So they sound like they've got enough capital to carry them through. We're just not going to be making any revenues yet. Very disappointing. Then they followed that up with some better news. On July 1st, Ovid Therapeutics and Graviton Bioscience announced top line data from a phase one clinical trial study on OV888. The phase one study met its objective, demonstrating a favorable safety and tolerability profile with no serious adverse events. Thank goodness. So they got through the safety trial. It's not hurting anybody to take this. There's no bad side effects. So now it's going to move into phase two. This can take up to three years. They got to prove the drug works. Now, normally this sort of news will get you a bounce on the chart and then it comes right back down because they know there's a long wait. So you don't expect these to jump and stay up. So when this sort of news comes out, we normally want to grab our gains while she's climbing because when she falls, it's straight down, folks. Rocket stock up, run out of fuel, crash back down to earth. Now, there's only one piece of news that we need to take a look at. This came out on, um, where's the date here? There it is, July 10th. eNeuro publishes findings on the anti-convulsant properties of OV329 and its potential effectiveness in treatment-resistant seizures. You got a peer review magazine here that has taken information about this OV329, and they have spread it out there amongst the medical community, and it's making a big splash. 
The company announced at eNeuro, a peer-reviewed open access journal from the Society for Neuroscience, published several preclinical studies validating OV329's me mechanism of action and anti-convulsant properties. To the end, they state, OV329 was shown to have higher potency for the GABA-AT target than published studies of Vigabrantrin, which is an FDA-approved GABA-AT inhibitor. So what they're saying is their OV329 is better than what's out there before it's gone through tests. So they have hope sitting on the table. But again, it's a long run. We're talking preclinical here. So all their drugs, phase one, phase two, there's a lot more time to go on. But as I said, the chart looks hot now. So what was the relative volume around the company today? <sighs> Down. Down almost two-thirds. She's got about one-third of her normal volume here. She normally has 1.6 million shares a day over the last 30 days. Today, she's at about 600,000. Looking at her share structure, well, that's not too bad. Outstanding shares are under 100 million. We're at about 71 million. Don't know what the insiders own, so I can't do any math and tell you what the float is. Best I can tell you, it's not going to be over 71 million. And because they're on the NASDAQ, we have a minimum criteria of a million for the float. So no less than a million, no more than 71 million. And to be honest, folks, if it was close to 71 million, I wouldn't have a problem with that. That's not a bad float, not at all. But it could be considerably less. Market cap for Ovid, we're at about $66.5 million. Financials? Well, they do have some money coming in here and there, and it's, it's wacky. Back during the COVID era, 2020, they had about $12.5 million. 2021, $208 million? Where the heck did that come from? Did they sell an asset? Did they have a spin out? I have no clue. Some DD needs to be done there. 2022 falls way back down, 1.5 million. And at the end of 2023, we were at 391,000. Now, if I was confusing you, we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on these charts. That's where I came up with them. Now, what confuses me here is that cost of revenue. It says they're not paying anything. Well, if you're selling drugs, you have manufacturing costs, electricity, hourly wages, uh, packaging, distribution, all that. Where are they paying for it? It doesn't look like they're selling anything. And to be honest, I haven't seen any drugs that have been approved, but I haven't done a deep dive, so I can't swear to it. But they would have some cost connected to it. You normally see free money like this when you get to keep every single dollar when you've got a digital product. You know, you're moving it from a computer to a computer. That don't cost you nothing. Or consultancy if you're just talking to somebody. So I'm not quite sure where that money's coming from. Quarterlies, same thing going on. They are bringing in money here up to 100000 150000 and they're not paying anything for it. So that's good. Wherever this money's coming from, it is helping them pay for stuff. We like that. Take a look at that balance sheet. Wow. Look how much money they got in the bank. Over $30 million in the bank, 131 in assets. Oh, please don't let the liabilities be high. Less than half, 53 million. So we've got positive stockholder equity in a research and development company. That's a good thing. We've got about 78 million here. Disclosures for the company. Do you believe we've already looked at these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That were the, uh, these here, these are all the filings that I brought out from over there. So we've looked at all of that. So they had bad news, which brought the stock down, 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 down. I don't know what it was worth. You know, if you do a public offering and you put so many shares on the market, you can do the math and say that was 10% dilution. So the price drops 10%. I don't know how you figure what this was worth. Could have been an overkill. Could have been way too far of a drop. When you look at what she's got, you know, one of the ways you can figure out what this price could be is to take the um, share structure and divide that in to the stockholder equity. 
That's one way to figure out the stock price. Right now, she is working her way back up, and I think we have an opportunity here to set ourselves up for some gains. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's take a look at Ovid, ticker O-V-I-D. This is Ovid Therapeutics. We're going to be charting her on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I've got it opened up to a six-month, four-hour chart. Now, as you can see, she is in a downtrend. It was slow and slight before. She had a little bit of volatility coming deep underneath it, then jumping up above it, but pretty much hanging around that 200. Now, it was back in February, she hit her high of $4.10, and then down here at the end of June, she hit a low of 68 cents. It was right here, June 17th, when that report came out that they failed the phase three trial. Missed it by that much. And that's all it took. She dropped from $3.22 down to 70 cents. And all she could do was go sideways because all the SMAs are way up there. No way she's going to try to recover. So she's biding time until they come down. Here comes the nine, not a big kick. Here comes the 20, nothing changing, actually hit our low. Here come the big ones, our 200 haul and our 50. Got some excitement on the board now. She's moving. Fell back down on top of the 50. Now she's starting to climb ever so slowly, but she is pushing and floating on her 9-day SMA. We got our 20-day climbing right behind it, 50-day underneath it. And what's most impressive is our 200 haul has finally changed. Now this is a big deal, folks. Your 200 haul, my 200 haul, because it probably isn't on your chart, I talk to you about this a lot because it has a relationship with the price that you don't get with the 200-day MA. Both the 200 haul and the 200-day moving average take 200 days of prices and average them all together. But the 200 haul relates to the price by putting more credence on current prices. So you end up with an entirely different long-term line which has as much authority, as much power as that 200 MA but it can relate to the price. So you see the price using the 200 haul to manipulate its move on the boards. Many times we see the price fall to the 200 haul and then use it as a catapult. It'll be underneath every SMA with the 200 MA way up here and it'll hit that 200 haul and it'll shoot like a rocket through every SMA to and through the 200. This is why I like the 200 haul on my charts. And when she turns blue, she's climbing, that's when we start to get strength. I'm expecting this to start picking up more momentum now. Our oscillators are looking great. Our PPO is climbing. Our MACD is just starting to climb. I know it's tough for you to see. And our RSI is pushing up as well. We've also got a pattern here in our oscillators. When my PPO, my blue line is climbing, and my ADX, which is trend continuation is falling. When you see those two spreading apart, guaranteed your price is rising 100%. And if you're looking for an exit, say this thing is climbing super fast and it is just spread out like that. As soon as one or the other line changes directions, it doesn't matter which one or which direction. When they change directions, you have stopped climbing. You're not falling necessarily, but you stop climbing. And that could be a good exit sign for you. Now, before I leave here, we have no supports and resistances. You look back, there's just nothing here. So where do we know to get in and get out? Well, what I like to do, folks, is use my Fibonacci at this point. The Fibonacci can give us algorithmic supports and resistances, S&Rs as I like to call them. Big dip, big climb, poke the top where it started, and then poke the bottom where it ends, and there you go, folks. These are not attached to any historical price point, but these are supports and resistances that not only you and I can trade with, but the price is going to respect. Now, another thing I can tell you here, like we've got a very big spread here. We're at a price of $0.74 cents to $1.32. Come on, that's a big gap. There's got to be something in the middle there. And that's exactly where it is. You can... Draw a line in the center, right in the center of each one of these, and those two will be soft resistances as she's coming up. Now, if I put one in here, 
Our price goes from about 74 cents up to 132. So we're looking at about a buck four or somewhere around there. About right there. I'm trying to see it just with my naked eye. All right. Oh, that's not my right line. Let me grab this up for you, folks. <laughs> well, that'll work, but let me get rid of that and put this in there. Right there looks to be the middle. Now, what I'm doing is I'm looking right here, and I'm trying to find the center. But look, follow that line over here. Boom. We had a break there, and she's bumping her head against it right now. So we've got a support resistance here that she is trying to break through and get on top of right now. And they climb all the way up, right through our 200, back to home. And this is the staircase we will use to climb. When she comes up underneath one of these resistances, if she hasn't got a lot of momentum, she's going to stutter. She's going to hit her head, come down, and try to break the ice to get up on top. When she gets on top, she's going to bounce on it a few times and then go to the next one up. Those are your points of getting out, right up underneath one. Getting in, you want to be on top of one of them as she's bouncing off of it and not breaking through. You don't want to get in when she's breaking through. You want to get in when she's launching herself. Let's come on down to our 20-day, one-hour view. Lots of bars there, right? So, there's our 200-day SMA coming down fast and furious, and right now she is flat. She crossed over it right here. She was already climbing. She has just kept going through. She walked over this. No excitement, no big lurch and pop. She just walked right on over, minding her own business, coming down to our 50-day SMA, using that as her push-off point now, and now she is starting to launch again. Oscillators, we've still got our pattern on our PPO and our ADX. Our MACD is climbing, green bars coming back into the picture, and our RSI is rising. Our one-hour chart is looking pretty decent, folks. Look at our five-day, five-minute. So we got a low bubble in this corner of 81 cents above our 200-day SMA. She is bouncing through the 50, coming down to the 200 here. Got a nice high through a strong resistance of a buck five. She hit a buck nine. Came down and broke through that 50, but did not come down to the 200. That was about all she could hold right there. After that big punch, she came down to the 200, and she is trying to get her bearings on this, and now she's starting to launch again. After market, we do see some volatility, a big drop, a big pop. She is right up underneath. Now, understand, folks, I did draw these on the four-hour chart, so they're like ballpark. When the bars are so tiny, you really can't get them exact. So it could be a little higher or a little lower. But you can see we're in that zone. Chances are, the way this looks to me, it should probably be like right there, right? <laughs> you can see brrr, she is all over that trying to get through it right now. And that sits at a buck four. Our oscillators, well, we had a drop. You can see the big drop. And now she's trying to come up. But everything is volatile. We're going to have to wait and see what happens pre-market, but I'm liking the stock. On the long chart, she shows she has started climbing. And as I said before, I don't know what the value of losing that phase three was. I mean, you know, we can put a big value on it because it was revenues and who knows how much that was worth. But from the own company's fundamentals, what they're worth now, I really don't know. So whether going from 322 down to 70 was overkill or pretty much where it should have been is anybody's guess. But right now she's climbing and there's a lot of gains that could be taken just getting back up to where she was. Now, I would think maybe halfway up would be a good place to sell. Going 100%, that's really asking a lot. But if we can get this to jump 50% from where she fell, we are up right here is our 50% mark. That is at a dollar 96 and we are at a buck so you're looking at virtually 100% gains there. If she reaches that point and looks strong, I would still sell about half of what I have. Half of what you have is going to give you all your investment back. But you're going to have just as many shares left in that are going to catch gains and grow. When it starts moving fast again, sell some more. You don't have to sell everything, but sell something. Take some of that profit and let smaller and smaller capsules rise up and see if you can catch the top with maybe 10% of your holdings. All right, let's go take a look at another biotech pharmaceutical company now. 
Now, this is not your everyday average run-of-the-mill pharmaceutical company. <laughs> this is SciSpark, ticker SPRC. This company is out of Israel, and they make their drugs out of cannabis. SPRC finished today just under 80 cents, and she dropped about 2.5% today. And this is another hot penny stock on the NASDAQ. Now, they give us a description down here, which is good enough for what we're looking at. SciSpark is a specialty clinical stage pharmaceutical company focused on creating and enhancing a portfolio of technologies and assets based on cannabinoid therapies. Their focus is to make medicines out of THC and CBDs, and they are targeting Alzheimer's disease, the treatment of pain, ASD, and epilepsy. Now, jumping over to the news, I found four pieces of news I want to share with you. Each one of these is important because each one of these can get the stock to move. This first one came out May 31st. The company secures strategic advantage with grant of European patent. Today, the company announces that the European Patent Office granted the company's patent application titled Compositions and Methods of Potentiating Antimicrobials whatever that means. They also just got that patent in the United States as well. They tell us down here that the company's intellectual property portfolio now includes patents across several major global territories, including the United States, Europe, Japan, Australia, and Israel, comprising nine patent families and two trademarks. Our next piece of news came out July 8th. SciSpark signs non-binding letter of intent for a spinoff. They are involved in a merger. They are looking at a public company on the market and they're going to do a deal with them. And they're going to get 75% control of that company and spin out a portfolio of assets onto the exchange. That's going to give us free shares, dividends in this company. According to the agreement, the company's pharmaceutical assets are valued at approximately $11.5 million. The letter of intent references a proposed asset and share purchase agreement, the definitive agreement of which is to be negotiated between the company and MISA 3 Ventures. This is ticker MIZA on the Canadian exchange. SciSpark will sell, assign, convey, and transfer to MISA the target assets in consideration for about 63 million shares of MISA company. SciSpark would hold controlling interest in MISA. They would hold between 75 and 84 percent. Not quite sure how much yet. The agreement aligns with SciSpark's strategy of creating value for its shareholders and follows the merger agreement and transaction concerning Automax Motors as previously announced by SciSpark April 11, 2024. I am unawares of this. They had a deal back on April. Is that one closed? Are they still working on it? There's some more due diligence there, folks. But now they've got a company here they're trying to close a deal with, and we do not have a date here. That first quarter of 2024 is not it. We have no date, no season, no period when they expect this to be closed. They're just telling us about it. So we've got a spin out. They're going to spin this out onto another company where we're going to get dividends for that new spin out. And the company's got some other deal in the works or already completed with Automax Motors. Next piece of news came out July 16th. SciSpark announces U.S. patent application for treating metabolic syndrome and weight loss. The company announced that an additional patent application with the United States Patent and Trademark Office was submitted as part of its ongoing collaboration with ClearMind Medicine. I've been posting a lot of news about them recently. This is ticker CMND on the NASDAQ. They are focused on discovery and development of novel psychedelic-derived therapeutics. So now we're talking CBD, THC, and psychedelics? Overall, as part of this collaboration, 12 other patent applications have been filed by ClearMind with the USPTO for various compositions, including the proprietary composition of Cyparks PEA with ClearMind's MEAI compound for the treatment of alcohol use disorder, cocaine addiction, and obesity and its related metabolic disorders. From what I've been able to gather from the news I've been posting here, 
ClearMind has this M-E-A-I substance and SciSpark has a PEA substance. When you put the two together, they work to help fight alcoholism, cocaine addiction, and obesity. This would be huge. So we've got all of that to look forward to as well. The last piece of news isn't good, but it could be a stimulator. Our price of the stock right now is almost 80 cents. Well, they were notified by the NASDAQ. They've been under a dollar for too long. On the major exchange, they have minimum criteria for everything. Market cap, how many shareholders you have, how many shares are in the float, everything, including the price. If you go under a dollar and stay under a dollar for too long, you'll get kicked off the major exchange, thrown down to the OTC. But they don't do it without a warning and giving you time to fix it. So the company has up until January 13th, 2025 to get this in order. But there's nothing the company can do. It's up to me and you, the investors. We have to bid this price up over a dollar, close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. That will get the company out of hot water. That'll get us out of hot water. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh my God, folks, we got a huge increase in volume, gigantic. Wish I had my calculator because I can't do it in my head. We are going from 162,000 shares a day for the last 30 days as an average to over 44 million shares today. That's a lot of excitement, folks. That's a lot of extra shares being moved. Share structure for size spark. Eh, that ain't right. They tell us here that the outstanding share count is under a million. If it was, that means our float would be under a million, which means they'd be in hot water. They got a minimum criteria in the major exchange of a million in the float. I did some searching around. Looks like we've got an outstanding share count of about seven and a half million and a float of about two and a half million which is an outstanding float, folks, especially when you start moving a ton of shares. You move 10 million shares and you've only got 2.5 million in the float. That means you have to sell every single share five times. What if you do 100 million? You have to sell every single share 50 times? I mean, that creates supply and demand. There's not enough shares to go around when you start getting strong volume. And we have strong volume right now. Market cap for the company. I don't know if I trust that number, but they tell us it's just a little over a half a million. Financials for the company. Back in 2020 and 2021, they weren't making anything. 2022, they came on the scene with 1.3 million. Year later, they more than doubled that to 2.8 million, bringing home some strong profit. 2.1 million out of that they got to keep. Quarterly reports. We're not going to get any here. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. It's not that they're not filing them. It's just that it's a major exchange stock on the OTC market. And sometimes you don't get everything there always is. But we do get a balance sheet. Remembering those three zeros here, we've got 2.1 million in the bank. Total assets of just a little over 11 million. Total liabilities is way down there at three and a half. So we have got stockholder equity in this company of $7.6 million. Not bad. Disclosures for SPRC. I don't know if I looked at these either. 6K, this just came out here recently. SciSpark announces receipt of minimum bid price notification. Yeah, we did read that one. Another 6K on the 16th. Uh-oh. Let's see. Um, SciSpark announces U.S. patent application for treating metabolic syndrome and obesity. Looks like we got all of these. Oh, looks like they're putting some more shares on the market. Uh, this effect is the gun. Boom! That says it's actually happening right now. Notice of effect. To figure out how many shares they put on, you're going to have to go back and look at some of these other filings somewhere here recently. They'll tell you how many shares are going out there. So we've got a lot of different catalysts here, folks. We've got a spin out onto another company's uh, ticker. We're going to get dividends for that. They've got another deal with Auto Mix, Auto Maker. I don't know anything about that one. They've got patents that they keep putting out with other countries and they're working with ClearMind. There are a lot of catalysts here, folks, and the chart is in a breakout mode right now. We're now taking a look at ticker SPRC. This is SciSpark. We got this opened up to a six month, four hour view. As you can see, she has been in a downtrend the entire six months. 
She had a really nice high back in November. We were at $14.21. She fell down to a low here at the beginning of July of 60 cents. Now, once she fell off that high, she came underneath the 200, but she was struggling to get back up on top. And these are huge bounces, folks. We've got a bounce here from $5 up to $8.60, one from $3.50 up to $10.50. I mean, these are giant bounces. But once she started to pull away from the 200, that was it. All of her enthusiasm just disappeared and she went flat. Now, let's get a couple of S&Rs while we're here. These are gonna be in the ballpark, not on the money because these bars are awfully tiny, but we got one right there at about $3.35. I see another one about right there. All of this sitting on it, this hitting its head. That is about $2.25 and we'll get some more when we come down to the lower time frames. Let's zoom in on this, see what we've got going on. We've got a downtrend. The 200 was falling fast, but you can see it's curving now. It's getting less and less. And right here, we had a breakout. She was falling. She was underneath all of her SMAs. She pushed off of that low bubble through every SMA, came down, bounced, and jumped really hard. Now, folks, this to me is a token symbol of a climb. I call this a directional intentional spike. And it's twofold. This bar and that bar. This bar here starts on the low ground, pushes up with its solid bar up to the 200. We don't want the solid bar going through. What we do want pushing through is that wick, that spike way, way, way up as far as it can go because what she's doing is creating an opportunity for herself to break out. There is an invisible string attached to the top of this price to the SMAs. When she pushes that price up high, she is pulling those SMAs up. She is causing the 200-day MA to go flat. That's gonna be her opportunity to break out. So we've got this one pushing up at the solid bar, stopping at the 200, then pushing out a wick. The next bar tells the rest of the tale. I do not want this falling any lower than where this one started. That is a perfect setup for me right there. So all I'm gonna do is watch right now. She could come all the way back down to the 200 hall, which is now blue, pushing up, and use that as a catapult and directly launch herself to and through the 200 with a very strong run. That's kind of what I'm looking for here right now. Lots of volume came in today. Compared to the days before, not much there. Our oscillators were very strong, but after hitting this high of a buck 48 and falling back to 77 cents, a 50% drop basically, of course you're going to expect your oscillators to be pulling down. But they are sitting in a nice position. She broke that 200. She is now sitting on top of her 50 with everything looking like she's ready for a breakout. Let's come on down to the 20 day, one hour view. All right, so our supports and resistances are way up there. We've got nothing down here. So let's try to grab one. I see one across the top right there. No doubt about that. Everything is hitting its head on it. Coming through here, that pierced it. This one broke it hard and she's way down there. So let's grab another one low here. How about right about, maybe in this area right there, that is at 76 cents, and right now we are just below that. I think we are at, no, we're just above that actually. Well, we closed at 79, aftermarket she has been falling. Looks like we are at about 76 cents, and our support is at 78 cents. Osculators say she could dip just a wee bit more and start to turn. All of them are coming down, about ready to hit the bottom cusp and start to curve up. Take a look at our five day, five minute view. There's our low of 60 cents. She pushed off that low, got on top of her 200 day SMA, right in her 50, falls down to the 200 and gets this jump, pushing from 78 cents up to that buck 48, almost 100% jump. Coming back down to that strong support here at 94 cents, bouncing at the bell, going from roughly 98 cents up to a buck 30 and then falling the rest of the day. She struggled on her 200 here, couldn't hold it, fell down to this support here at 77 cents and right now she has magnetized underneath it. 
She's not sitting on top of it, but she's suckled up underneath. I think she'll probably go sideways right now, waiting for these SMAs to turn. They're all coming down on top of her head. She can either let them keep pushing her down or she can struggle and just hang on to a sideline going sideways until all of them turn and start climbing and then she'll jump on and start to climb. That's what we're hoping for here. Oscillators, they show signs of recovery. We are in a bad position on our PPO, but we are right up to that line. Our MACD shows recovery happening right now. And our RSI is just turning right now. She was falling. She is just now starting to come up. There's a lot going on here, folks. We've got to spin out. We don't know when that's going to happen. We're going to get dividends from that. They have another deal that they worked on in April. Maybe that's done. Maybe they're closing that. That deserves some research. They got patents coming out. Working with ClearMind to help cocaine addiction, alcoholism, obesity. And ClearMind has been doing a lot lately. So I'm liking all of the news here. Anything can drop and pop and this stock could take off and she is in a position to take off. That's the whole point. She's in an atypical breakout right now looking vulnerable for a run. But of course, do some more due diligence research. I only covered enough to get you curious, right? Before you go putting your money in, go do some more research, folks. You know what I always say, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.